Today we are in conversation with the Deputy Managing Director for the Ghana Stock Exchange. We'll be understanding what is the Ghana Stock Exchange, how can we also make money off the stock exchange, and what can be done to encourage financial literacy in a new changing world of finance. My name is Jifa Bampo. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much, uh, Abna Amwa. Thank you very much for joining us on First Take. Thank you, Jifa. Thank you very much for having me on this program. Great. And uh, you've been Deputy Managing Director for the Stock Exchange. It's almost a year, isn't it? It is almost a year, and I can't believe what a year it's been yeah. so far. Yes. Lots of time has passed, lots yes. of work also. Absolutely. Certainly, um, a lot of changes in the last one year due to COVID-19. How has that kind of affected the work that the Stock Exchange, for instance, does? Yes. It's been very interesting with COVID and its impact on our market. Um, it's been an exciting time, actually. The, during 2020, when uh, the nation went into lockdown, the Ghana Stock Exchange, of course, suffered, I mean, was impacted as many companies were. For us, luckily, we automated all our systems as far back as 2007. So essentially from 2008, all our bookers trade, not from the floor of the stock exchange, but from their offices or from their homes because they trade on a web-enabled platform. All our systems after trading go through in a straight manner to the settlement system. So when the nation went, uh, 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 we had a lockdown, we were able to continue trading. We did not miss one minute of trading at all on the platform and as it turned out 2020 actually was one of our best performing uh, years ever on the stock market in our 30-year history wow on our equities market we traded the second highest and third highest value and volume traded ever on the market and on our debt market which is our uh, fixed income market which we set up about six years ago we smashed for the first time the hundred billion volume of trading we traded double what we did in 2019 so the stock exchange itself uh, the performance of the market was quite good uh, last year of course we had to protect our staff so we went into a system where we provided additional resources to enable staff work from home. And so all the, all the human capital that we needed to make sure they were safe, we did everything to make sure they had access to the right uh, medical advice, uh, the right PPs to enable them to work. When it came to the listed companies, there were some companies that of course were impacted negatively uh, during COVID. Um, you can see companies that were, that were in the manufacturing, some of them in the manufacturing, some of them in the food processing area suffered, and yet there were gainers. So the telecom companies that provided the data services, the digital solutions for us to continue to transact business, we saw in their financial statements that they did well. So overall, I would say that on the stock exchange itself, COVID didn't impact us negatively as a company. We were able to test all our business continuity plans and make sure that we function completely uh, seamlessly during the period. Um, and then we protected our staff and thanks be to God, none of us were impacted badly. That's it good was to a know. good year. Congratulations. In reference to Ghana, when you want to tell people what the stock exchange is all about, how would you explain it to them it's a very very simple concept and i want to not make it technical at all the stock exchange is where companies that need long-term capital long-term capital to grow their businesses to employ more people to create value for our economy this is where they come to raise long-term capital Long-term capital can be raised mainly through two formats. You can do what we call issue shares, where you invite people to become shareholders in your business. It means they are a co-owner in your business, and they take up some of the risk 
that you face as the person who started the business. And for that, they give you money. And you take that money and you buy more equipment, hire the best people, do marketing, etc., and grow that business. So there's that side of the people who come, or companies who come to the stock exchange to raise capital, long-term capital. Then there's the other side of a stock exchange of people who have savings, who have over the years, they have plans to retire well, to pay for their children's education, to build a house in the future. So over the years, they've built up a savings pot. And they want those savings to get bigger than planned. So they invest those monies. They create, they look for investment opportunities. And they are looking for well-run businesses with potential for growth to invest in them. So there's the savers who are looking for investment opportunities. And it can be an individual like you and I. It can be a company. It can be a fund. They can come together, create a bulk pot of money, and look for investment opportunities in these companies that are either looking for shareholders or another form of capital they can be looking for is debts or loans, long-term debts. So here is where they come to say, okay, give me a loan for five years because I want to buy new equipment and expand my factory and it will take me about five years to pay you back that money. Mm -hmm. So they come to the stock exchange and they also issue what you call corporate bonds. So the investors can give money to companies and even to governments. So that is essentially what the stock market facilitates. After you've given the money to the company that wanted to raise capital, your plans may change or as they are using your capital, you may decide that I've met my investment targets in this company. What do I do with my shares or the bonds that I, the loan I gave them? You meet other like-minded people on the stock exchange where you can sell that investment you made in the business to another person. So that is essentially what the stock exchange it is does. there to facilitate the trading of the securities that are issued as we give long-term capital to governments or companies. In explaining it this way, is it a good way to measure Ghana's business environment, how businesses are performing on the stock exchange? Yes. You're absolutely spot on. The purpose of stock exchanges is to mirror the national economy. So first, we must have a broad range of the companies that are impactful on the Ghanaian economy onto our stock market. And you will begin to see that it very much closely mirrors how the national economy is doing. Shell, unfortunately, is not listed it's on no our, listed. Okay. Is, has never been listed on our stock That's exchange. It is a public company and we invite them okay. to list on the stock exchange. Oh but companies in the financial sector, the banks, the insurance companies, we have gold mining companies, we have the oil mm -hmm. uh, sector, we have uh, telecoms, of course, MTN, which is a big player here. We have a few IT companies here. We don't have enough. We want to move the stock exchange to the point where all the significant sectors and all the significant players in our economy are listed on the stock exchange. But it's provide. not cheap to be on the stock exchange. If you want, if you want more companies to join, yes. from what I know, there are lots of listing fees to be paid. There are lots of annual fees that are paid. So it's not cheap to be listed on the stock exchange. That is actually not the reality when we investigated what other markets cost. The actual listing costs when you are out to raise capital. Remember a lot of these companies go out to raise capital. The SEC regulates the amount of money you can spend as you go out to raise capital. And they cap even those expenses to not more than 5% of what you raise. That's first. We found that many companies raise capital at costs to uh, amounts raised of maybe two and a half percent at most three percent. And that includes all the cost of running very expensive marketing campaigns and raising the capital. 
what we want to make sure on the stock exchange is that the companies that are listed here put in place systems that allows them to be accountable to the investors that have given them the money. So you must have a board, a strong board, and a strong board that has put in place systems that allows you to audit your accounts, to choose the right auditors, to have annual general meetings, so you can account to the people that have given you uh, the money. But as we say, there's, not, there's always room to do better. The benefits of listing on our GAGs is so overweighs or outweighs the 4,000 CDs of getting your securities listed and facilitating the trading of, of, uh, of, of uh, investors in those securities. So we do not think that... That fees are the, the deterrent. Are the, no, we do okay. not think that's the barrier. Well, any, we I, any idea why the, yes. we don't see enough of the companies yes. then listing? I, I think there's, a, there's something cultural about Ghana that we need to work on. And that is the concept of opening up our business to attract capital, to have more partnerships, and to grow that business beyond what satisfies us so, and our immediate family. So are you saying that a lot of the companies that list are typically foreign, have a certain corporate identity, and not per se local or family-owned businesses? Yes. There's only so much you and I, as a small business, can grow uh, with our own capital. So there comes a point in the life of a company where after you've done the family and friends, you've gone to take bank loans, you cannot grow anymore. None of the large global companies have grown just by financing themselves on corporate, on bank loans, and especially in Ghana, where it's just short term, uh, expensive bank loans. So you must only grow long term if you are going to access long term capital. And the long term capital is the shares and is the opportunities that the Ghana Stock Exchange provides. This is where you come to find shareholders who say, we are not going to be part of your day-to-day -day management of the business, but here we will fund 50 million Ghana cities, 100 million Ghana cities, or in the case of MTN, 1.1 billion Ghana cities when they raised capital. We will give you this money, invest in more infrastructure, take advantage of after, who your business, so that we create champions that live beyond the founder, because that is where a lot of our companies are. Uh, last week, we signed an MOU with the Stanford Seed Network, an amazing network of 100 Ghanaian-owned, founded businesses. And they are all going through a very important transformation agenda. How do we make our companies the next Dangotis? So that is local companies. Local companies. But isn't the perception almost true that a lot of the time, family-owned businesses may end up losing their business when they go public. That's, that, to the contrary, hasn't been our experience here. A lot of the family-owned businesses, Camelot, that listed, uh, Mechanical Lloyd until their recent yes, uh, delisting, uh, have retained what ownership about, is it and control. Was it Acton as well? Acton, yes. yes. They remain on the market. Okay. The thing with companies that don't survive are many of those outside of the stock market. They do not survive because they do not have enough capital to continue to grow. And so other entrants come into their space and very soon they cannot survive the competition. So the stock exchange is where you come, you raise the capital that you need, you put in place the governance structures that will strengthen you. This is where they go because that is what stock exchanges do. I know there's also a perception that it's only some type of businesses that do well on the stock exchange. So the telecoms uh, businesses, those engaged in um, consumer uh, services. But there's a view that companies that operate in the extractives, for instance, don't seem to do very well and have the sh their shares dip. 
what kind of clarity can you bring to us on those issues? Okay. So we've had, uh, if you take our Ghana alternative market, for instance, we have Intravenous Infusions Limited, which is a company, one of our best success stories on the company. They it's came, an indigenous company. It is an indigenous they company. They produce the medical infusions. Thank you. So they came, they raised capital. But isn't that because, I mean, people need infusions every day. Absolutely. So this is an indication of something we're doing, we're importing all of these things. They raised capital, they cleaned off their balance sheet, they are stronger to do better. We've also had a few, uh, um, several natural resources companies list on the stock exchange. And many of them in the gold sector, gold mining sector, and the oil and, uh, oil, oil and gas sector. They have mostly been what we call cross listings. They are listed on mega exchanges in other parts of the world, but they operate in Ghana and they have thought it important to provide an opportunity for Ghanaians to also own their shares. So aside Anglo Gold Ashanti or Ashanti Gold Fields, which are listed, which was one of our biggest listings around the world, um, uh, the other ones like uh, uh, Talo, uh, Golden Star have all been cross-listed because they are already listed on their local, on their international bosses in, in uh, New York or Toronto or London and they also listed in Ghana. The performance of those companies have been affected by global uh, commodity prices, have been affected by the management of their own businesses, etc. And um, unfortunately, the story hasn't been as positive, whether it's here in Ghana or in their primary listing. But that hasn't been something the Ghana Stock Exchange itself has done to cause that. So we do take into account that there are all sorts of different sectors. There are sectors that lead to the growth of the Ghanaian economy, the services sector, the manufacturing sector, more agro-processing companies. We need to, the, we can't talk without uh, mentioning the IT sector. So these are the new engines of growth and we are very much focused on attracting more companies in these spaces. I know you've said that the Ghana Stock Exchange has a strategy plan. Mm -hmm. So I, I assume that in trying to attract um, other areas where they would then do well on the stock exchange, that would be part of the plan. Mm -hmm. But tell us a bit about this uh, strategy plan and what you're seeking to ultimately achieve and what are the synergies with maybe SEC or any other stakeholders? Okay, we launched a three-year strategic plan and our aim by the end of the strategy uh, session is that the stock exchange must be the preferred platform for raising capital and for investment. The preferred platform for raising long-term capital and for investment in Ghana. Emphasis on preferred. The preferred. <laughs> there are many, it's a big ecosystem for a company to raise capital or for government to raise capital. And the, our strategy is really anchored on a few things. Introduction and diversification of the products on our market is key. So to this end, very soon, uh, we have developed the rules for trading OTC. What's OTC? OTC is over the counter. So companies that are already public companies like Shell, who you mentioned, mm -hmm. but they are not listed on any stock exchange we will provide a platform for a shareholder who wants to buy those shares or uh, one who wants to sell those shares to trade those shares. So those rules are in front of the SEC right now. In terms of making ourselves relevant, as a new area we are looking at is sustainable and green financing. So we're looking to see how we can put in place the rules to attract investors who are looking for green, social, and sustainable finance, and whether we are issuing it in bonds or debt uh, instruments or in equity or shares type uh, instruments. Another area we are looking at, because liquidity, 
where if you want to buy something, it's immediately available. If you want to sell some, something, there's a, there's a ready buyer for you. So how to improve liquidity? We are looking at the derivatives markets and introducing futures on some of our indices and specific very liquid uh, securities like uh, shares that we have on the market. So it's very important for us to be ahead of the investments, uh, investor needs to provide more products and a wider variety for them. We also look at the diversification of the type of companies that are here. We've done well with the financial sector. We need to do more. We don't have all the banks that we want here. We don't have half even of the insurance companies that we want here. So we need to bring on more listings. And on that, we are targeting it this way. We are approaching the private sector and we're also approaching government. We have entered into an MOU with the state's interest and governance authority, SIGA, who manages a portfolio of over, over 100 government uh, companies. Some of them in joint ventureship, some of them government owns 100% to see which of their companies we can bring to the market, list them, they can raise capital or government can sell some of its stake in there for money to do other things. Another area for us is for financial inclusion, we are developing digital solutions so that as you lie on your bed, you can track your stock market portfolio, you can uh, buy, you can send your order to your broker, you can see what's happening on the market and place an order to buy shares. Now, in as part of the plan, who are you targeting? Because some people look at buying stocks the same way they buy treasury bills. And when the stock price drops and they may not get paid a dividend, there's a lot of um, unhappiness with whatever organization. How can you make us, Ghanaians, make money from the stock exchange? So there's a lot of education that needs to go in, in there to explain the concept of risk, return, at what point in your life you decide what type of investment you want to do and your investment objectives. We have, as I said, about to launch a significant campaign on that, working with the entire investment industry, our stockbrokers, etc., to help people understand that over the long term, the stock market does return great uh, returns to you. So far this year, we are up 34% on the equities markets. 34%. There are companies if you bought in January, if you sold today, you'd have made 80% return. That is excluding the dividend you'd have made from them. There are companies today in the five months, you'd have made 80% return, which is tax-free. That return you made, there's no capital gains tax. It's tax-free. Okay, so there's that so people can begin to understand how you make money off the stock market. So in the 31 years that the stock exchange has been around, the returns on average every year over the 31 years is 25%. It is not bad at all. But there are people also, or within every investment portfolio, it's not just the share component. You can also look at the fixed income mm -hmm. market. So the yeah. fixed income market is similar to what we do with treasury bills. It is, mm -hmm. exactly. So the Ghana Stock Exchange actually runs the market for the secondary trading mm -hmm. of treasury bills, uh, treasury notes, both of which are issued by government, uh, and uh, government bonds, and corporate bonds. That has actually grown to become our largest uh, segment of the market. So when are you hoping to implement the strategy, or you've started already? We have started. We are in the implementation, and it's exciting times. Lots of meetings, uh, lots of the team is totally aligned, and we're pushing this. All right. What are, what are you doing for women? You know, you are... You are a known women entrepreneur, you are an investment banker, you are a financial advisor, you know, an expert in, in mergers and acquisitions. What are you doing for women, SMEs? You know, it's, the World Bank tells us that in Africa, 
women are the ones who own the most mm -hmm. small businesses. What are, what's the stock exchange doing for this category or mm -hmm. this group mm -hmm. of, of business people? Okay. As they say, women hold up the other half of the sky and no economy, no institution will develop without women taking up their rightful role. Here are the stock exchange. Um, we, the stock exchange is very committed to promoting gender diversity. At our management team, it's actually 50-50. At our executive committee level, it's also 50-50. On our board, there are three women versus four currently. And when you add our secretary to the board uh, composition, it's 50-50 as well. We believe that the skill sets, the unique skill sets, the unique attributes of women help to make a place stronger. And so towards this end, towards promoting more diversity in boardrooms and at the, at the corporate level, we've been engaging with groups like uh, Masha Shong and her Boardroom Africa. They are work around highlighting um, the impact of diversity on companies' performance we, is something we believe in and share with. Their work around grooming um, the next set of executive and corporate board members, women, to take up these rules is critical and we believe in that. Their work around, you know, sometimes companies say, oh, we don't know where to find the women directors. And they're like, here, we have a database of hundreds of people that more than qualify to sit on your board. So if any company is looking for women to sit on their board and whatever sector it is, they can come to the Ghana Stock Exchange, you provide them with a database. Through to the choose, boardroom, to Africa, choose from. we will okay. show them our partner. And then also we realize that through our Stanford Seed Network, through our AGI, through the various uh, institutions, especially as we are looking at targeting the SME sector, we are meeting a lot more women that are running businesses. So we have Samba, which is an agro-processing food uh, that's run by a woman listed on our exchange. We have Camelot, which was also uh, which is also listed Camelot on our Camelot is our like the pioneer. Yeah, Mrs. Exactly. Villas exactly. is like the pioneer. And we want more of them. Mm. There are many, many women running very strong businesses. businesses yeah. And we are out there targeting them and making sure that they come and list on the market. Any final words? The stock market is out here to make sure that people's investment needs are met. What we do on our side is to make sure we have the right rules in place. Any company that comes here and takes someone's money, that they are going to turn this money around and create jobs and create products. We are here to support you and we welcome you. We're open for business. We're here to make sure we have a strong market that rewards investors and that provides capital for companies to grow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abna Amwa, Deputy Managing Director of the Stock Exchange. Thank you for having us on First Take. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much.